second bit to even map on it. So when we first started talking about the um, Greenway design there in front of the uh, elementary school, um, if you notice how right now the, the design is, is largely against uh, the, the fence, you know, it, it crosses the road there, then it goes behind that tree line, and, and let me see if I can get us to better image here on GIS. wonder, since the Hoskins house is so old, if they would be more interested. You mean on that side? Yeah. Well, the, 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 the problem with keeping it on that side is, well, number one, it's got to cross anyway, but if you look at this picture, uh, these trees are really large. We, we looked at that early on in the design, and, oh, and, and it's, it's got to cross the road anyway, and, we, and you, you get separate. into the septic right here. Yeah. 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 That. And even if there's room, you, you just have to take out those trees where they're lying. But, what I was going to say is, and personally, I'd come get you. If you did. Yeah, so so you have that design <laughs> crossing the road and and going toward the, the fence. It, the design now skirts that skirts. track most of the way. And, and what I had talked with them about early on was uh, in trying to highlight uh, the monument right here, the DAR mm -hmm. monument was. Um, if you just kind of watch my mouse right there, mm -hmm. I I had hoped that we could swing that in and and get it in front of the monument and swing it back out and then go this way. And um, so I, I talked to and then it got designed all right behind it. And you can certainly tie it in with brick pavers to where people you know can easily get in front of monument mm -hmm. monument. But I had asked. Ed with Stuart again an open house uh, to take another look at that and um, um, he had sent me some pictures of it and basically he said we would have to take out a couple of trees in here to do it well because you can only have so much of a radius in that uh, curvature of, of the greenway mm -hmm. and up uh, at Centerfield Road he did a big swing out and then a big radius to get around the corner of the fence and I was talking to him about that um, he doesn't, they don't want to do their swing radius down low, um, you know, across from the sheriffs and see that big swing? Yeah. 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 They go around the big tree there, and, which makes sense if you're ever going to have a crosswalk there to get to like a sidewalk or something. Oh, yeah. Because it gets it closer to the corner. Because um, they start out on street frontage immediately after the crossing, but then they go behind. You know why? Why not stay street frontage the whole way? And so what I, I told him for now is just leave it the way it's designed. But you know, I just wanted to throw it out there. Maybe sometime when you're that way, maybe just stop and take a look and, and see if you can imagine mm -hmm. taking out a couple of trees close to the monument and. And bring it in front and, and just just see if you have any opinions on that before we would certainly make the, the the VAR monument more noticeable because it's not very it's kind of you have to be looking for it to notice that it's there it's yeah and, and you could certainly put a little small lower to the ground sign at the greenway off to the side and and if you if you design that area with pavers into the monument area, mm -hmm. you could certainly, you know, nobody's going to miss it if they mm -hmm. want to see it. But I don't know; it was just a thought. But mm -hmm. without getting too uh, down in the weeds about the design of it, I was curious if, oh. when, when you, when, when Stuart was there um, at the open house, if, you know, if you had any concerns, if committee members had any concerns about what they saw in the design. The only thing, you know, it's strange, that front lawn, when I was in school there, 
we never used it because the, the train went across. Right. So we didn't, right. Right. We didn't play on the front lawn. Yeah. It, went, it went right, right. through here. Right. Yeah. But now, you know, for years, they took, you know, after they made it a playground, kids were right there at the road and where people could just come right up to them and talk to them. I couldn't figure out why there wasn't more, more protection and, you know, keeping people away yes. from that area. And that, still, as I see how close it's coming to the, the fence, I mean, anybody could go right up to where they're playing and, and you can't very approach. easily go below the fence. Well, well that's a, a crystal I, to that I would say that's a common fear, but a, I think if you looked at statistically, no, it doesn't bear. It's a hard well, I'm to pick a child up. Yeah, it's not Four just feet that. Off it's the that ground and bring them over a fence. It's not just that. It's that you've created this um, venue that you're going to have lots of people going, especially exactly. in the town core, where you have eyeballs, mm -hmm. especially well, during school hours. Too, yeah. Um, and so look at look at the look at this uh, our comp plan up here. That's this a good point you're talking about, but it says, you know, right in the, it says right here under the trail system, common objective at the top there, let me get it bigger for you, oh. so, so right there, well integrated network of streets, sidewalks, bikeways, hiking trails, and horseback riding trails. Um, well, I'm reading the wrong sentence. Go back to the second sentence there. High level of connectivity. High level of connectivity between neighborhoods, other destinations in town, such as schools, parks, and shopping. So, you know, that, that's something I've heard sometimes, even from the school, about. Um, well, you know, it brings users really close to the school, and in in so many communities, people want it brought close to the school because they want to use it. To, they want to use it for their kids to get to school, school to go yeah. walk. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I live not at a Greenway, but in, in a former town, I was four blocks from the school, and and I walked to get my little boy, and yeah. Every day, I mean, it was well, a spectacle. Well, think of how many cars. I mean, certainly a lot of them are coming from farther afield, where they might not use the greenway. But if you just eliminate the twenty cars that are in this core mm -hmm. that yeah. drive over. Well, Jessica Wharton, at morning and the afternoon, there are parents coming out of that neighborhood next yeah. and across the street who are walking their children yeah. and oh, the really? dogs and I mean it's it yeah oh yeah that we sidewalk almost, is well used up oh, there. Right. We almost bought in, in that neighborhood next to Jesse Warden just just for that approximate reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, incidentally we were just driving up here and I had to stop to meet the babysitter at the fire department but I passed this kid you guys won't be able to see this riding his bike like I do. We saw him too. The he red background. Oh, we saw him. Yeah, yeah. 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 all the way up. Yeah. And he was down by the pharmacy. Yeah. Chugging along, but you know, there's no shoulder. Wow. Think yeah. if he had the greenway. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. want he would have had Yeah. yeah. Um, so and he was doing a great yeah. job. He was probably young teens. I mean, yeah. I would say young teens. Um, you know, I don't know where he was going. Yeah. But we saw him um, approaching the. Oh, really? Yeah. So he was going a pretty good distance. Mm -hmm. uh, but he could certainly use the mm -hmm. <laughs> But yes. the same routes to schools is also, um, you know, policy 2110 is pedestrian and bicycle friendly school zones should be established and implemented mm -hmm. around all schools consider sidewalks as a priority around near schools. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also another section I remember from the UDO work. Um, I forget what, where it was, perhaps. and it literally it calls for bringing greenways right to the schools um, for the very reason mm -hmm. of you know, getting people out of cars, letting parents walk their kids to school, mm -hmm. older kids can walk themselves to school. Mm -hmm. um, 
So well, we'll get 210 up at the top of the screen. Potential. So okay. pedestrian by civil friendly school zones. Um, I mean, this is, you know, this is right into that policy, mm -hmm. uh, the design that we have. And, um, you know, I, I just try to keep pointing this all back to the comp plan. You desperately need a sidewalk down Sunfield Road to, to, to the school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and that's my question, going back to the map, do we continue to work on this map with those kinds of ideas of how do we how do we go to the next to the next step um, with a map that actually has some teeth in it? Yeah, well if you go back to what Carrie said about about having a map that's actually adopted as an official map, that's where we get that's where we get some um, some teeth as far as um, when when developers are are getting close in those areas or getting mm -hmm. close enough, however it, it gets defined, um, to where uh, they start looking at how they they make some of these connections for us and. And again, that's going to point them right back to the comp plan of how to how to implement that. Exactly. But the ordinance is going to give them the detail of what they they need to be doing. And one thing, you, you know, and you may feel like I, I have felt a little bit like we've, we've been moving slow lately, and, and Stewart has uh, been somewhat on hold because of uh, uh, Baker, their their stormwater contractor, and, and it's taken longer to get to the, this point, but. Um, what the conversations I've had with with Stuart and Ed and his his um, his boss is that um, if if you remember back to spring when uh, when they came and talked with when Stuart came and talked with council a little bit more about um, just giving us a status update project uh, they they came with uh, another quote it's it's a little bit over fifty three thousand dollars related to um, some additional work. So if you if you go back to how far in this project we are with design engineering, uh, we had that that base contract um, for three hundred twenty thousand. When, when we made all the changes and going down two twenty, that was roughly another forty two thousand dollars in them. Uh, and then we had another twenty nine thousand roughly addendum to add the section from the school up to the Madeiras. Mm -hmm. And so so we're in as far as commitment was stored around three hundred and eighty nine thousand and and when they brought us this additional quote, um, the, the message back to them was but before we start talking about this additional work, um, it, it at least this was my opinion that I communicated I would like to see every bit of that finished, you know. So, so we're we're completely finished with what we finished? what's we're we're not quite finished, but we're close. And um, so, it, it, and just the reason I bring that up is this is back from the end of May when they come to that council meeting um, uh, when they had given us this additional fifty three thousand dollar quote. Um, some of that had to do with things that that especially when we decided we needed to go down 220 and through the watershed you know that added some work to the project for instance when you get down into that watershed area there's some boardwalk areas and that boardwalk mm -hmm. design wasn't in the original scope you know so there's some of that money that's in there for that and then erosion control drainage design um, and so you know that's kind of where we are with with them right now trying to give them time to finish the last part of where we are before council weighs in on where to go next with that um, and as Carrie was talking about uh, earlier um, we were talking today about you know when do we start um, looking at some of these properties along Summerfield Road uh, that we still uh, have some negotiating to do and uh, some details to work out and um, I, I think that's sooner instead of later I mean because 
we're going to, the right away phase with the DOT funding is going to be here before you know it. I know it feels like it's far out uh, with 2022, but you know, as you've seen since 2013 on this committee, things take a lot of time with something this big. And, um, we've been on this committee that long. Yeah, we formed it in 2013, and about this time of year. It's amazing how fast so, time flies. Yes, we've been, been, been at this five years. Five years. Wow. Yeah. And uh, we've got a sidewalk. And, and this is not. Yeah. And it's not finished. <laughs> and um, this isn't good. Let me show you something else to do. Um, just quickly, I don't want to eat up all your time. But well, Scott, before you jump okay. on the next thing, um, since you had the top thing open, mm -hmm. um, if you go to page 81, there's a, a whole page on North Carolina State Routes to School, and of course, this is circa 2010, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it, it lays out only 15% of children living near schools walk or bike to the to schools today, this compares to nearly 90% a generation ago. As a result, about 25% of morning peak hour traffic is made with parents driving students to school. And then goes through funding. I think, I think the SRTS grant funding has changed, right, since 2010. I'm not not sure on that part. I think it's. I'm not sure there's still funding, but anyway, um, if there is. Uh, that should be, you know, we should try to capture some of that grant money yeah. um, and going close to satisfying the safe routes to school justifies the funding, um, could lower costs for summer field. And then the other thing is um, on page 148, um, the action items for quality school facilities, action 9.1 and 9.2, both. Um, Prioritize, you know, funding, construction, and maintenance of facilities within walking distance of schools, e.g., Summerfield Elementary, and then Safe Routes to Schools grants. So, you know, these things are, these directives are kind of sprinkled throughout yeah. the conference. I, I remember talking to a mom a year or two ago who had, who wasn't too far from the school with older elementary school kids at Summerfield Elementary and, and she was talking about she trusted them. They were old enough and responsible enough. She trusted them to walk to school but from what I remember she was lamenting how you know there's just not a good place for them to walk. And and yeah. it's and you know to cross and, and cross. That's tough. Right. Mm -hmm. um. Well how do I mean, and, and that's something to think about if we ever got sidewalks for kids to walk to school. How do schools get uh, crossing Cross, people? Yeah, crossing guards. I um, mean, they're crossing guards in Blacksburg. They were employees of the police department, not the school. Yeah, it, it depends. Yeah. Sometimes it, uh, with schools you can get you can get a police department like this community I was telling you that I came from a small community but but uh, we eventually got a crosswalk and and what a lot of people think um, you know why does the DOT just go out there and paint a crosswalk on a road so kids can cross and and they're and I'm generalizing here but generally the answer is it creates a false sense of security mm -hmm. to have an unmanned crosswalk because kids assume it's a crosswalk and I can just go and cars are going to stop and so it's a big they see it generally again as a big liability unless it's it's going to be regularly and we made. are the home state of Richard Petty and, so. <laughs> That's and, right. um, so in this community our police department um, you know, in the mornings and in the evenings, mm -hmm. would be out there, you know, leading kids across and directing traffic. But, you know, I mean, and I'm not saying that's what we would do, but, um, and, and there are different designs that don't necessarily, you know, with lights that don't necessarily have to be manned. But, um, you know, it's not as simple as just mm -hmm. laying down the paint. <laughs> Speaking of Richard Petty, did you know a couple of years ago, NASCAR bought USA Cycling, 
which manages all of the road cycling events and mountain bike racing events. Rich, Richard didn't hear it. No, <laughs> but the, part of the reason they did was because so many of their NASCAR drivers were starting to road ride the yeah. fitness. Uh -huh. Train. Uh -huh. And it's true also oh, of all the, mm -hmm. all the super bike guys who the, you know, travel tracks, the VIR, when you walk through the pits, um, next to every trailer is a road bike on a trainer. Mm -hmm. And then you see on, on Strava, you know, some of the cycling apps, big rides go out, you know, during the week while they're there doing practice. They'll go out and get their workout in. And it's become really prevalent. Um, you know, Jimmy Johnson and Matt Kenseth and Chase Elliott, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has been kind of working out his TBI issues. So it's there's a subtle shift going on in the culture. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't. I, I think there's going to be a huge shift at some point. I think we're at the beginning of a tsunami. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think. I, I don't think. I, I hope. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think we need to be thinking about it and trying to be proactive right. so that we're not caught. In in Colorado, uh, my husband just came back and son just came back from Linville. Colorado is trying to connect all of the towns in Colorado with trails. That's really? Yeah. That's really great. Yeah. That's fabulous. So. Um, they don't have much else going for them. <laughs> have you got time for me to give you just a brief update on the Piedmont Greenway? Absolutely. I don't know. No. You um, are the program. Well, I, I Jenny's just got to, something to talk to us about, but that's, and, and that's I'll be, it. And, and I'll be quick because I wasn't prepared to talk about this. But um, so you know, we we've talked. We just haven't talked about it in a while. So you know, there's there's an effort right now that's, that's been going on for. Uh, for the last year plus um, with the Piedmont Greenway, uh, which is the connection between our AMLI Greenway, basically the 220, uh, the tunnel, all the way to Triad Park. And that's a that's a, about an 11 point something, say 11 mile trail system. And that, that's gonna be a, a monster kind of project. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we think our, our section is big, but this is, really big but um, so periodically I've been going to stakeholder meetings um, uh, with Alta the design so that's the Piedmont Greenway Stewart equivalent is Alta uh, design and um, just to kind of tell you the latest on that it's it's not quite ready to be um, you know they're, they're still working on some of the details of um, how to start engaging the public more um, about that plan, but um, <clears throat> right now it looks like it's going to be broken down into uh, probably three large spaces. And I, and I bring it up here because if you look at, just show you the main part of the connection with us. So, I know, isn't that amazing? <laughs> if we get I have my pointer, but you can see my mouse there, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, okay, so, all right, if you imagine you, the tunnel is about right here, mm -hmm. we go down 220, we go into the watershed, and we, we follow the watershed through here. <clears throat> and this is the northern tip of the Greensboro and the Greensboro oh, right. property for the watershed. Mm -hmm. So this is what's carved out for the watershed. And this is where Mr. Couch's property starts and the Greenway skirts this. Mm -hmm. so, so where our Greenway snakes through this area mm -hmm. and takes that northern turn is where the Piedmont, and I've said this before, it's nothing new, but that's still where the connection would be. So it, it, it would be getting built, you know, from Bunch, across Pleasant Ridge, tied in at our, you know, the, the closest point, and then basically they would, you know, just be claiming that part over to 
you know, through the watershed up to 20 to the tunnel. So that connects the Piedmont directly to our Greenway. But the reason, another reason I'm mentioning all this is that um, one of the things we talked about was if, if somewhere in this general area along Bunch Road becomes a trailhead for that, and that's just a proposal at this point, um, I said, well, I wonder if we could look at instead of, and I, I talked to you about this, Jane, but yeah. just as an idea that's that's being floated, well, I wonder if our greenway goes through here and, and we're a little bit further along than that is, wonder what the feasibility of going ahead and, and adding to that project a section that connects over here. So with, with the reason being that on the other side Wait, of that gentleman's farm? Well, I'm, I'm not going to say exactly where, but in this general area of Bunch and Pleasant Ridge, um, Alta, the design firm, had proposed a trailhead for the, the Piedmont Greenway. Mm -hmm. And the, the idea that that we talked about was, since this is a monster from from this point of our Greenway all the way to Triad Park, and it's going to be phased, yeah. what if during all this construction, we could get a segment added and uh, and get the tied to the trailhead that they're proposing for theirs, and then suddenly you've got visibility from Pleasant Ridge Road uh, in that area got, got and another trail. trailhead. So <laughs> instead of in, instead of the greenway being known to just be okay, there's access points on 220 and on Summerfield yeah. Road. Mm -hmm. Wow, that suddenly kind of opens it up earlier. Mm -hmm over in this, you know, west of that, towards Pleasant Ridge and Bunch. And, um, I don't know, it's just it's just a thought they're exploring. Nothing firm on that, but, yep. um, just... Yeah. And are, are, they're not a paved trail, though. They're, they're are they? Piedmont's not going to be paved, is it? Um, it, yeah, it will oh, be paved. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, I thought it was yeah, I thought it was going to be a good trail. But because that's name, what uh, what's his face said. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. it's a little bit preliminary to be talking about that. I was just throwing that out there as a, you know some of the things they're talking about and how to best engage the public because you know that's a lot of that's a lot of area, eleven miles to try it hard. <laughs> <laughs> what was the concept <clears throat> from um, from that little triangle? Um, yeah, they, then further west. Yeah, they're they're looking at going through the watershed, coming you know into ultimately when you get over closer to uh, uh, Bunch Road where Bandera Farms is. Yes, and and that area and ultimately working its way over to 68 and, and crossing 68 and making its way ultimately to Triad Park and there, there's a lot of obstacles um, in terms of you know 68's a, a really hard thing to even figure out how to cross because of the you know the height the, the flood heights of, of bridges and you know and how heavily that's used and so you know there's a lot of initial planning that's gone into that, but, um, you know, as, as they get a little further along in their planning, it'll, we'll be talking about it more publicly. I'm sorry so, you didn't. Where is Triad Park? Like I oh, good, no, good question. Okay. Good question. So, um, I think I'll just call it fast, but okay. so, so if you look um, on this map, we don't have it here, but so Market Street. So Triad Park is somewhere in this area. Okay. I have to find Before you get the map. Yeah, um, so it's twenty one. If you go up and it's on the right, yeah. it's got baseball fields. It, oh, well, it's last time huge I went up park. there, it yeah. has four hundred and some odd acres of horses in there. Too. Oh, yeah. Wow. And and I think the entrance is a little uh, 
confusing. Yeah. But there's the baseball fields, as I remember, before you get to the entrance. Okay. And it's a beautiful, my company that I work for used to have their yearly picnic out there. Yes. And it's a beautiful park. It's where the big uh, war memorial, major size war memorial is out there. I'll, I'll show you real quick on this. Oh, no, I haven't seen that. I've only seen the cover. <laughs> Jane, it's also where they, um, the, the trails, uh, horse trails and bicycle trails mm -hmm. are such, at least as my memory, is that, um, you know, you don't want horses and bicycles on the same right. trail. So it's like Saturday afternoons, it's for the horses or something oh, like that. Yeah. And so they alternate nice. so that, um, you know, they can use mm -hmm. safely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Share that's, trails. Yes, yeah, that's but, great. Do, yeah. yeah. So that's yeah, another that's, feasibility for, for us to do here. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good, um, not that I mean for mm -hmm. yeah. all users. And we need to look at the tobacco trail too because they yeah. they are having oh, really, they're, they're really successful. The Tassali <laughs> trails around um, Fontana Lake do that method as well where they, uh -huh. um, they do, you know, like they have sort of Clover leaf set up mm -hmm. two trails over here and two trails over here, and every um, every other day it switches. Okay, every and other it's, day. It's posted online and the schedule is posted at the trailheads, and so. Mm -hmm. That's probably um, yeah, better than every other day. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> it's kind of an ecological solution, too. You think about like right. um, hawks will hang out in this particular tree all day mm -hmm. long hunting, and then they'll leave, and the owls will come out at night, and they'll hunt from the same tree and the same, you know. Oh, cool. It's, it's a Sweet. natural right. method. Oh, for, that that's great. And, and this is just gives you an idea of the size of this. So if, if you're going Market Street toward Colfax, mm -hmm. you, you have an exit right here. It's kind of an oh, industrial okay. area. But all of this is park all wow. back in here. And, and for instance, uh, I can set you right there at that memorial. <laughs> they got a humongous amphitheater out there. Um, so is that where they do like music in the park when they hit that? Yeah. I never made really go to that. And point. it's uh, they've even got well, it's not a, it's an old picture, but they've even got out there um, as part of that memorial area, they got some of the remnants of uh, the twin towers, oh, the wow. actual yeah. uh, building as a, a sculpture and wow. thing out there. Yeah, it's a, it's a big deal yeah. and. Um, and it's shared by Milford and Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's it. Just to give you yeah. an idea, mm -hmm. this is a, a huge monument. Right. Wow. And um, Twin Towers uh, sculpture there and uh, major, oh, major oh, yeah. amphitheater. I mean, it's oh, like wow. you could have an Elton John concert out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. and, and again, that's, that's huge and that's regional news and not summer field sure. specific, but mm -hmm. but we're key to it in that uh, you know the connection with us, mm -hmm. you know the the A and 